Terry Jones of the Edmonton Sun. The topic close to everyone's heart at this time, the Wayne Gretzky exodus to California. We'll be back to talk about the trade itself and maybe shed a little more light on those rumors circulating around right now. Also a reminder that we'll be taking your calls very shortly. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, and Terry Jones in the studio. We'll get right to some of the questions we want to get at the heart here. Everybody's dying in Edmonton. What, what do you guys think about the trade itself? Everybody's up in arms. Pocketton sold them out. Or what's the story? What do you think of it? Well, where do you start? I mean, there's 16 <laughs> different angles to this thing. Uh, right now, Edmonton is, uh, I think, in a position where everybody is uh, upset and wants to do something, but really there's not a heck of a lot they can do. What do you think, Brian? I don't think as many people are as upset as uh, media people would like you to believe. I uh, have a very strong feeling that the Edmonton public is very understanding. I think that they're coming around more and more at understanding mm -hmm. that this is something that had to happen simply because of the circumstances. And quite frankly, uh, as Sather has pointed out and others have pointed out, life goes on, will go on, and I think they'll continue to win championships, and I think they're a stronger hockey club for it. Before it's all over, they'll be a stronger hockey club. You think it would have blown over a little, like, uh, would have pleased maybe the fans a little more if Pockington would have come right out and said the reasons for the trade, more or less, are keeping everybody up in arms? I was at the press conference, and uh, I have, of course, recorded mm -hmm. everything that he said. I listened to it back. I think he was up front. I don't think he hit anything at all. Absolutely nothing. Uh, if you think back now to chronologically mm -hmm. what took place, you understand that what he said was exactly true. That's exactly what did happen. He did talk to Wayne upstairs. He did, uh, he did request uh, from Wayne certain things that uh, weren't forthcoming. He instructed his general manager to go out and find out what this product was worth, as any mm -hmm. good businessman would do. Uh, upon hearing that, the person in question, Gretzky, contacted him, fearful he'd be dealt somewhere else, and said, at least do me a favor. I think Pocklington did many favors for Gretzky. So now you get people on the other side of the coin, though, they're quite perturbed. I'm on the other to, side of Okay, the we'll, get, we'll get to her <laughs> side now. I mean, what people forget is, how did this thing start in the very beginning? Mm -hmm. And it started back uh, last year when, when Peter Pocklington wanted to turn the team into a public situation and sell the team and keep it two for 60 million or whatever it nothing was. Nothing to do with it. And what happened after that, and we're going to have fun here. It what had, <laughs> but it what had no, nothing to sec, do with it, Terry. We don't have yeah. a phone to hang up here. What okay. happened after that mm -hmm. is you get a situation where he had to get out of the contract, which was a personal services contract, get it in an, on an NHL contract, and that w the whole beginning of this thing was greed. And once you start there, you can flip it down the line. But just saying greed, like he owns a, he owns a team, it's not like you, uh, you own it for fun. It's a business. Oh, it's certainly, and that's, uh, but the, when, you, when you're talking about Wayne Gretzky, and that's what, that's what the whole essence of this thing is, is the emotion, the, uh, you're talking about somebody that this town mm -hmm. wanted to be separate of any, of any of the normal things that, that we talk about in the world of sport every day. This is a guy, we're talking $18 million here, this is a guy who is probably, to this city, worth about $18 million a month in terms of publicity and status and all the things, and this town didn't want to lose him. They're mad as hell, they want to do something about it, but they don't know what. Well, what are you going to do in four years, though, when his contract's up? Well, the he thing was planning is, on leaving. but that's another point. Four years from now, you're in a situation where he's uh, he's played those four mm -hmm. years out. He's four years older. Yeah. Uh, it, it becomes on his head if he's going to leave the hockey team then. Uh, but the point of, of a diminishing asset, and that's what Brian's talking about, mm -hmm. from a business point of view, a diminishing asset, he's not worth even if he stays here. Uh, 18 million dollars to Peter yeah. Pocklington. From a point of view, if if all this is is strictly business when it comes to to Wayne Gretzky, fine. I mean that it was a great business deal. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if it's dollars and cents and that's all it is, Peter Pocklington did the right thing. But I don't think it's all business. Who do you think wanted to renegotiate that lifetime contract? Well, certainly the guy who was. Let me ask you. I'm asking you. Who who wanted to renegotiate the contract? Both people involved. And oh, they, and they, now we've got both left. people. Wait certainly, a minute, Terry. I said Just that all a, the way. half a second. Half a second. <laughs> Gretzky wanted that renegotiated. And so did Peter Pockwood. Just a minute. The fact is that Gretzky wanted it renegotiated, and I'm going to tell you something else in my view, is that in addition, we haven't brought in a couple of other names into this. Where do people like Ian Berrigan and Mike Barnett fit into this, mm -hmm. who are his financial advisors and his managers? They're the ones who had these things written into the contract, and that's where the problem began. It had absolutely nothing to do with that wanting to take the club public. Gretzky wanted out of the lifetime services contract. Well, certainly His did. people wanted him out of it, it and they contract. said, and they said, you know what, Wayne? Don't worry about a thing, pal, because you know what? Because you know what? They'd never trade you in a million years. The town would go berserk, 
They'd, Peter would never do that. Don't worry. We'll be a free agent. After two years, you can retire. You can retire as a free agent after two years. After three, you're out, and then you can make your deal wherever you like. And you know what, Terry? That would happen, and guys like you and know. all of the other people, listen, guys like you and everybody else would be jumping up and down three years from now, and the Neil Waz and the rest of them and saying, what a lousy manager Sather is, what a horrible business person Peter Pockington is, to let this guy, worth this kind of money, walk away, and what did this hockey club get? What did our hockey club, what did we get in return? Probably Nothing. Three the guy four left. Stanley exactly. What did we get? <laughs> Nothing. And you know what? What, the, what was done was done because of greed on the part of those who wanted to change that lifetime contract. And Pocklington went along with it, and then when went Wayne... Went along with it? Yes. He got the best out of what he could do. Well, of I, course. And when Wayne wanted to now this time, mm -hmm. when Wayne this time went to him and said, if you're going to deal me, deal me to L.A., Pocklington also did him a favor and said, okay, I'll make a deal with L.A. Because I'll tell you something else. Sather was miffed because he felt he could have made a better deal than the one that was made, and Pocklington went along and made the deal out of deference to the fact that Wayne Gretzky was Wayne Gretzky. And it doesn't come into and the there play was anywhere in here that Wayne Gretzky was in a situation of being the fourth or fifth highest player in the National Paid Player in the National what's, Hockey League. What's that so, got to do with well, it? He should be. He should be the number one paid exactly. player. Exactly. And he finally was last year. He, the, the point is, is that both parties walked away from that deal. And that deal is the essence of the story. You're right on that. But they Thanks both walked lot. away with the deal with a <laughs> smile on the face. And... Uh, I'm sorry, okay. I disagree. Yeah. Okay, we've covered Pockington's <laughs> reaction, fan reaction. What do you think about the players now? A lot of them are up in arms. Or supposedly Messi was holding Forget his Forget the lines. players. Tell the players to go home and wait till they call them to training camp. <laughs> I'd like to hear the players stand yeah. up and say, oh. we got to put this behind us, oh. drop the puck, right. let's go play and win a Stanley Cup. Right. I mean, this story has to get by Edmonton sooner mm -hmm. or later. If I mean, this club has any character, and if these players are true professionals, that's exactly what they do. And we have I to hear Kevin Lowe, and we have to hear Mark Messier say that, and they haven't yeah. said a word on this. Well, they better. And besides which, what, what the players were... Readables. Where do they get <laughs> off demanding anything? Where do the players get off demanding anything? They're paid chattels. That's what they are, if you get right down to it. They signed a contract. No one twisted their arm to sign it. And you live up to it. You don't do like Paul Coffey did mm -hmm. and walk out on a deal with two years remaining and then shoot his face off in the past week and say, my friend Wayne was treated like a piece of meat. But apparently in Messier's situation, he didn't sign that contract last year. He so took he money. Yeah, I, he I took the money, but he hasn't got a signed contract. So well, what? That's, so what that's can he do? put an asterisk beside that one. Of course. I think the situation is, is these <laughs> players are all of a sudden saying, hey, uh, there's extra money around here, uh, mm -hmm. cut us right. in. And that ha that is where the root of the danger of this club, uh, you know, breaking apart at the seams is. It's not talent. I mean, this team right now without Wayne Gretzky is still at the level of Calgary, still at the level of Boston. They indeed could mm -hmm. win another cup or two. They will win more. Well, I hope you're right. They've I'd still got, if Sather was leaving, that's mm -hmm. what would upset me if Sather was leaving. Okay, let's talk about him maybe taking a lower lo or a, a lower role with the team, not being a head coach next year. Is that going to affect him? I don't think that this has any bearing mm -hmm. on whether he's going to coach or not. Someday he's not going to coach. Yeah. But I think he'll coach again this year. Okay, with Messier's situation, again, I hate bringing it up, but the thing is, he's got a lot of players behind him. He was going to hold that press conference. Who said he's Saturday. got a lot of players behind I don't, him? I don't think, uh, with that press conference, I think mm -hmm. what it came down to is Mark Messier decided he wanted more money. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think that's all there is to it. And I think that somebody got to him between the time he announced the press conference and the time he called it off mm -hmm. and said, hey, Mark, you're, if you want more money, you're in better situation not to hold a gun to their head in yeah. public than, than to do what you're planning on doing. And I think that's all there is there. But uh, until these players come out, and that's the only angle of the story that is left to be covered. Yeah. I mean, we can drop this thing as soon as the players come out and say what they've got to say. Yeah, let's touch base on one more thing before we head to the phone lines, the community ownership thing. I think uh, it's garbage. Well, I mean, <laughs> Lance, that's a pipe dream. It's not garbage. Uh, Lance has to be running for mayor. I mean, that's, that's what this is all about. I'll tell you what, God help us if that should happen. Oh. I'll tell you what, yeah, Terry, agree, agree. if that's what we're going to have replacing Lawrence DeCor, I'll run for mayor. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Hang in there, Lawrence. <laughs> Okay, we've had those viewpoints. I'll tell you what, we'll return to the phone lines wow. and we'll get to your perspectives on this trade. We'll be back in just a moment. Can't get to you fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> And even if it happened, the NHL would never They're approve not. the thing. And the That's club isn't for sale besides. Exactly. And if it was, Terry and I will buy it. Okay. Call but number two, go ahead. General manager. Hello there. <laughs> yeah, I'm phoning to ask Terry how he 
how we think the Oilers would do without Messi if he went to Germany. If uh, if Messi left the team? Yeah. If he goes to Germany. If it, Germany, did you say? Yeah, that's what that's I heard the on the news one. tonight. That's the latest, is it? <laughs> okay. Well, that's because he was there last year, I guess. you got to start He goes somewhere. there every year. His brother, his brother plays in Germany. He goes there every year at this time of year to uh, to be with his brother. I don't think there's anything to that at all. They're not going to... He's making $800,000 a year to start with. Uh, How do you get all these figures? Where do you get them from? <laughs> <laughs> you keep using them. No, I, I, I never use figures. I never use figures. Like I've never asked an athlete in my life what that's he gets. How do you get 800000 That's exactly what he's... Is that, that what he's getting? <laughs> yes. I, I can take that as gospel. Take it to the bank with the rest of the money. Okay, okay back to the phones. Go ahead, caller. <laughs> yes, good evening, gentlemen. How you doing? Uh, two points, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, number one, I don't feel that uh, Bonkington is should be dumped on the way he is. He's a businessman. He owns the club last time that I checked. He wants to trade away. That's fine. So be it. And the second point, I guess, regarding the athletes, these... Uh, I'm surprised the fans don't realize it. The players are all aware of it. Uh, they are a commodity when they turn professional. Uh, they know they can be subject to trades or swaps or whatever. And uh, they should face up to it. And that's about all I get to say. See, emotion has no place in business, and this is business. And the people who are doing a lot of the talking are, are, are talking through emotion. And that's the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. They don't understand anything at all really basically how it operates, what constitutes uh, the league, how you get in, how much it costs to operate, what their payroll is. For heaven's sakes, they, they, had, a, they had a story today earlier, $60,000 they'd raised or something already. I said, that, that wouldn't buy sticks for the season, $60,000. It, it is an emotional story. Sure it is. And that, the interesting thing I found, I think the media is ready to put the story aside, but the people don't want to put the story. I mean, we're sitting on an open line show today. Your radio station today wanted to put push that away. The calls yeah, kept sure. coming all day long on the open line show. Yeah, I know. The well, it's a simple thing to talk about. But still, the Oilers got the most with what they could get right now. I mean, Pocket didn't got rid of Gretzky when he could. $18 million. He's got Carson. He's got Jelena coming. Three first-round draft picks. It's not bad. Where do we get $18 million from? <laughs> that's just the one being thrown up in the air. 15 Why to 20 million. Why not 10? Million. Why not 10? Oh, it's got to be 15 to 20. That's what they're throwing into the air. 18 sounds good. It's right up the middle. Well, I like 10 better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another caller. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, good evening, Dan. Uh, um, the way I feel about this whole situation is this this is not a trade at all. This is a sale disguised as a trade. Now, I can't understand why Pocklington could have kept uh, Wayne Gretzky one more year and got $16 million for him. Now, the bottom line, of course, is if the team wins, everybody will be happy. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Well, you think the new guys coming will be able to help the team? Uh, most definitely. Oh, are you kidding? That Martin Jelena is an Yvonne Cornway, eh? Mm -hmm. And this Carson kid is, what, what is he, Terry, 20 years old? He's 50-goal scorer. I mean, they've got Fuhr. They've got all the other people. They've got the organization. They've got players uh, that they've got hidden behind doors somewhere. I don't know where they are. It, it and, and he keeps making yeah. deals and keeps winning with them. And it they'll win again. It's potentially possible that uh, Gretzky will choose to dis uh, retire within three or four years or, uh, hate to think it, but get injured. This trade could look great, but... That's not the point with the people in Edmonton That's right, right now. Okay, now speaking of trades, I think the next, tru the next trade rumor you're going to hear is probably Eva Pocklington from Morgan Fairchild. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make that deal. <laughs> well, I, di I, discounted the I discounted the other rumor that there was a swap being put together by George Hughes, who uh, runs Northlands, who, you know, mm -hmm. had, they own the building, right? Yeah that uh, I, I discounted that when he was going to swap Pocklington for Steinbrenner. <laughs> I, uh, well, Ballard's coming to the trade negotiation, too. No, okay. not Harold. He's too old now. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hello there. He's gone. Okay, we'll go long distance line. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, hello. How you doing? I would like to uh, make a couple comments, please. Go ahead. Number one, I wish uh, Mr. Hall would be quiet because I don't think he knows what he's talking about. Oh, he's entertaining. Uh, number two, is I think uh, the NHL or the Edmonton Oilers or Peter Pug, whatever you should say, should have the respect for a player. Can you imagine the Montreal Canadiens getting rid of John Belleville, even Cornwall or anything like that? The Montreal fans would have the arena shut down before they even knew what happened. However, there's one thing that you forget. There's uh, one major difference. Peter Pocklington started from scratch, built his empire, still owes a lot of money. He is a wealthy man, but still owes a lot of money. 
And uh, Molson Brewery, I think, has got a few bucks more than what Peter has. So you can deal differently. And I'll tell you what, when they did what they did with Howie Morenz, when he died at age 37, after they had traded him and he came back to the mm -hmm. Canadians, and since that time, they've never, ever traded any player from the Montreal Canadian organization. That was so long ago, and this is today. I tell you what, caller, they'd even make a deal themselves. I mean, look what happened with Guy Lafleur, the petit Fleur. You think that he's happy? <laughs> Who is this guy? I'm nervous when I'm not by the button. Can you tap this guy? <laughs> Boy, he's gone, worries. he's gone. <laughs> okay, we'll head to another caller. Good evening, you're on the air. Hey, good evening. How you doing? I'm bad. I just want to say, first of all, that uh, Mr. Hall, he's the, he's the most arrogant son of a bee that I've ever, I've ever listened to. Yeah, me and Peter. Yeah, well, you know, you're, you're so freaking arrogant, it's incredible. I like, to, I, listen, I like to listen to Terry Jones, and I like to uh, read his column, because he's really, you know, he really makes sense. You seem to get on the air, and you seem to uh, talk to people, and, you know, you don't even seem to care about what happened to Wayne Gretzky, or what he did for the city, or what he did for the team. Well, I'm going to stick up for Brian. He knows exactly what he did for the city. Yeah. Just the point being, it's a business decision. If you get rid of the guy in four years, or try to get rid of him in four years, you're not going to get as much for him. Exactly. He, got, he got a bit of money. He got five players that are going to be coming. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with I that at all. It's just, a, it's just the point. The point mm -hmm. being is that Brian Hall gets on the air. He gets he he uh, makes comments in the newspaper. He gets on the air and he thinks he knows everything. You know, nobody can argue with the guy because he knows it all. Terry, all I want to say before I hang up is that I'd love to listen to you and I'd love to read your newspaper article and you're fantastic. Thanks very much. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> 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 Had another good evening. You're on the air. Hi, evening nightline. Go ahead. Well, they just say uh, the most entertaining son of a bee I've ever. Uh, <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> and um, I, I totally agree with what uh, what you're saying about emotion. I think that's the, the reaction that's going around right now. And and I think uh, once people settle down and realize that we still have a heck of a hockey club in the city, and uh, we can win. I think most definitely with what we have, uh, we'll be better off. I think this um, community ownership thing is, is totally ridiculous. Uh, I can't see uh, that working for one thing. And uh, I think what Poffinson has done with the team and what Sather has done and the, the organization as a whole, uh, it's, it's simple. We have four Stanley Cups for the defending champions, and uh, it's ours. It's ours, and uh, there's 20 other teams, 21 other teams who want it. <laughs> that still ju doesn't justify what happened. Wayne Gretzky, the bottom line of this thing, could have been here for another four years. Well, what do you do after that? Well, you get to that point, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, with this outpouring of, uh, of uh, funds to An or emotion, or emotion <laughs> and everything to, uh, to come up with uh, to buy the team or whatever, uh, first of all, his value four years from mm -hmm. now isn't anywhere near to the team that Pocklington would be selling him to, admittedly. Mm -hmm. but, but personally, then he's in a situation where he has committed himself to a town for his entire career. I'm, I'd be very doubtful that at that point of his career, and we're at maximum he'd have one or two years left, that he would want to leave this town. He, he would have totally invested everything in this city. I don't think he would have gone. And Let he was ask, prepared to stay may here. May I ask you a years. question? Sure. Why didn't he say he wanted to stay here? Because of the way the whole thing went down. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. I know how it went down. Well, and he had an opportunity. Facility. He had an opportunity to say he wanted to stay here. Why didn't he? I believe he did want to stay here. If, if Why didn't he say he wanted to? Why wouldn't he take the clause out of the contract that had free agency? Why should Why he take it? Would you take that clause out? I that wouldn't is, take but that, that clause. Is, but that is not the point. That's the point ridiculous. is, if he really wanted to stay, and that's the point Sather made. If he, if he really Why wanted to stay. Why should he do that? Why should he make all the adjustments and not the other side? The other I mean, side did contract, make an adjustment. Oh, the other that contract was agreed to by both teams who left the deal with a smile on their face. And renegotiated. And one one mm -hmm. part of that contract Very. wanted to turn it over. And, and, that re, was not Wayne and renegotiated in the first place at the request of Wayne Gretzky's people. That was the a mutual renegotiation oh. system. I'm sorry. It that was renegotiated it was. because Peter was asked and Sather was asked, would you renegotiate the lifetime contract? It was their request. They renegotiated. That's concession number one. Concession number two, You're right. they also had the free agency clause in there. Concession number three is when he found out that because the free agency is in there and Pocklington and Sather realized... why did realized they do it then? They did it. But for why? Because of the business reason. Well, so Absolutely. So they could sell them later? Uh, what's the business reason? 
because he could walk away in three years from now and they get zip, including the hockey player who has gone, but they put not all getting those any players in, in there. The hockey team, Peter Poplington, Glenn Sather. At, their re at the request of the client. And they had a reason for doing it, and that was the uh, the scheme that ended up blowing up in his face anyhow, to get him off the uh, off the personal services contract and onto an NHL contract. And that is where the The league rules started. stipulate you must have a contract registered with the league. Well, sure. That the and he didn't have was. one, and he did not have one at that time. Okay, I tell you what, let's take okay. a quick break and we'll come back. We'll head to the phone lines and we'll get more from Terry and Brian coming up after this. Ski trade. We're going to go to the long distance line and we'll get to that caller. Good evening, you're on the air. Yes, um, I'd like to say that I think the whole thing has been blown in a lot of proportion. I totally agree with Brian and disagree with Terry. All of our stars like Neshe, Gretzky, Anderson, Fuhr are all going to be turning 30 at almost the same age and we would have nothing left. I think with the trade, we're getting Jimmy Carson, Jellinus, and a lot of young talent. And if Barry Fraser makes good picks, we should be set for the future. It's going to be interesting. One thing on that trade that's really going to be interesting is how Gretzky does in Los Angeles and what level of standings he moves that team up to and what number of selection. I mean, if, if Los Angeles suddenly starts winning Stanley Cups and you're picking 21st, <laughs> that's a weird trade. I'd like <laughs> to know how you win Stanley Cups with no goaltending and virtually no defense. I mean, the L.A. Kings are absolutely oh, I agree. horrid I agree. and they have always been able to score. So now they're going to score a few more. Big deal. I mean, uh, you know, so what? Uh, the, until they make a deal for a goaltender and get some help defensively that's fine somebody said gosh that Luke Robitaille this was on the uh, show the other night said that Luke Robitaille I'll bet you is uh, he's gonna go up five six seven times he's going to increase his point total I said yeah I said unfortunately for Luke is he plays the wrong side he's a left winger and the right wingers do well with Gretzky but not so much the left winger I actually is that not true I, yeah I actually okay. suspect that Robitaille will end up uh, being the Mark Messier of that team and on a separate line because they're going to have to separate the talent a little bit to make it effective. Sure, just like they have Bernie Nichols and uh, they'll make two or three lines, etc., and they'll score lots of goals. But in the meantime, it's not going to help them unless they can fix the other part of the game. But as That's far as their, their goaltending, they do have something coming up in the future. They got Fitzpatrick from the Medicine Hat Tigers and they got that kid from. Uh, Minnesota won the Hobie Baker Award winner. So they got goaltending coming up in the future, but you do, they do need something. Yeah, some but not this year, they're not. Yeah. Both of them are not going to be there this year. Okay, well, back phone lines. Good evening, you're on the air. Good evening. How are you doing? I'd just like to make a comment. Uh, uh, when Peter Foxington said that they were going to trade Gretzky to the Los Angeles Kings, mm -hmm. why didn't he inform Glenn Sather? Like, that's anything that I hate Parkinson for. Like, I thought Sather was, would more or less run the team. I thought Parkinson just kind of like stayed in the background a bit. Why didn't, you know, like, why didn't Sather have anything to say about it? I believe Glenn Sather uh, was fairly close to uh, most of the process involved. He's not naive. No, but I can tell you this. You know, Terry, one... I don't think Glenn Sather would have made the deal. No, he wouldn't have. Okay. You see, on a hockey basis, Glenn Sather would not have made that deal. Glenn Sather was a little miffed. And I... Well, he told me yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, Slats did? He, yeah. That he said, I told Peter, you're crazy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. Now, now, he was miffed, uh, Sather was, about the deal. But he was shopping around at the request of, the of Pocklington to find out what deals would be available. And now I go back to my other point that I said at the beginning of the program, is that Pocklington made this deal because of Wayne, because that's what Wayne wanted. On a hockey basis, Sather felt he could have made a better deal, and so he was upset about that fact because he said, I could do a lot better than what you're getting from L.A. But Peter says, that's where Wayne wants to go, and if this is what it's going to be, that's where Wayne goes because he's Wayne. The that's only reason concession Wayne, number three. <laughs> the only reason Wayne wanted to go to Los Angeles was to protect himself from not going to New York. He or anywhere he else. Gone. Exactly. Or he figured Vancouver, because so Vancouver it, made it, a better deal. From that deal. point of view, he did ask for the trade. But to yeah. suggest Wayne asked for the trade, I can't buy that. Okay. No, but he asked for the trade to go to L.A., and yeah, I said, I I'm, we're talking yeah. about why Sather wasn't involved <laughs> in, re in regard to He would have made a better deal. Yeah, sure he would have. Okay. He could have, probably. Back to the phone lines. Good evening. You're on Nightline. Yeah, I'd just like to say, as much as I hate to admit it, I agree 100% with Brian Hall. <laughs> I can't stand this. You guys, I'm telling you, I, I'm not used to this kindness. Thank you. <laughs> well, no, what, what I really wrong feel that we got to get across here is that, uh, you know, as a city, we got to get behind the team before this thing gets any further out of hand. Mm -hmm. And what I'm really getting bothered about is the media's picking up so 
so much on the negative side of everything that's going on that it's really going to do more harm to the team in the long run. I just hope we have an Edmonton Oilers to be proud of a few years from now. I think generally speaking, the media is reflecting the, uh, the feeling of the people in this town right now. I, d I don't think people are intentionally trying to uh, have any particular point of view uh, in terms of being negative. I don't think that's true. Well, I think, I think I, well, the one think thing like I love about this city and you're seeing a pretty good example of it right now, is that everything in this town, sports-wise, news-wise, gets a great watch. This is a great media town. And uh, th that process in this city, is why, sports-wise, is why it's a great sports city. People talk everything out. It gets, it gets a great watch. Well, it's a great sports city, too, because we have good, sound management. And, and I think really what Washington was doing here in the long run is, is for the best interest of the team. And, and, and we've got to get support for that because what's happening is, is everybody's focusing in on the negative and I think a lot of people think like I do and like Brian Hall does and you know that side's got to come out too everybody's showing the, the guys hanging Parkington in the street and that's not what it's how that, everybody that feels. Side is when, 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 you look, when you look back at the success of the Oilers and why they have been successful it isn't just because of Wayne Gretzky certainly he was a big part of it and you know we've talked many times the classy guy he is and the great talent etc. And, and all of those things are true. But on the other hand, when you talk about the success, the last big chance, Terry, they had to draft, if you want to look at it, was, was Grant Fuhr. And since then, because of their success, they've been, they've been low down. But they have a superb organization headed up by Sather and people like uh, his assistant, Bruce McGregor, and Barry Fraser, and everyone else in that organization. They are top notch. And that's because of Sather and the fact that Pocklington lets Sather run the club. Mm -hmm. Now, the only way that they've gotten the talent that they have, and, and, and Terry, I know, will back me up on this, is that they've had to trade for it. For the McClellans and the McSorleys and all of the other people and, the, and, and so many others, the Craig Simpsons, etc. You know, I mean, Craig Simpson was what? Pittsburgh's draft in 85? The Paul Coffey trade was an excellent trade. Yeah. yeah. But to suggest that, that from either point of view that they sat down and calculated this trade for the draft choices involved. Oh no 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 no! We're talking about we're <laughs> he talking. Seems to be suggesting no, he's that. not talking about that. He's talking about let's get on with it and talk about the organization yeah. and the fact that this is a great hockey team. It's not a one-man show. It's a great organization, and that's what it takes in order to win. And that's why they'll keep on winning. I, this is ridiculous to talk about boycotts and all of these other. That things. is the one fundamental point. Is that if, if they boycott the uh, the season tickets, the the regular season games this year, the only people that get hurt are, are the town and the team. <laughs> and uh, I don't think Edmonton wants to do that. I really don't. Uh, I think Edmonton would love to uh, set Peter Pockington up at center ice right now with one of those dunk tanks and everybody get 28 <laughs> shots at him. But <laughs> uh, beyond, I, th I think that's the whole, that's where we're at in this story, is people want to somehow get rid of that emotion and then once that emotion's by the boards get on with the season but they they still want to express their uh, and from both sides i mean yeah. this is the the biggest sports story that's ever hit edmonton and it's certainly the biggest controversy i mean most sports stories uh, have a three-day life here it comes there it is mm -hmm. there it goes but this one's hanging around and right now the, the people are keeping it uh, more so than the media it's I one believe. of the sports stories one of the big sports stories if you're well, talking about a person the day that they got a National Hockey League franchise is a bigger one. Well, I might not argue that one. Okay. But okay, let's get one more call before <laughs> we take a quick break. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello. I'm a retail driver with Palm. Mm hmm And at the beginning of your show, Brian Hall said that the public was quite understanding. They're not. <laughs> We've had a lot of cancellations because of this, and one of our drivers was even threatened. So well, who's this? Excuse me, who's this on the phone? She's a retail driver for Palm Dairies. Oh, okay. How does this? How do the people in your organization, the people you work with, uh, generally, when when a boycott happens at this, like the first people to get hurt are, are not the owners or the, or the management, of the, but the the people that are uh, in the, a position probably similar to you. How do you feel about it? Well, it's hurting our business a lot. Like uh, we had six cancellations today. One other driver had, I think, it was twelve. And like are we you, own these runs. <laughs> are, you, are you talking houses or commercial establishments? We do wholesale plus houses. She's, she's talking houses and stuff. Well, you see, ma'am, that happens every day. People get mad when they read Terry's column in the sun and they cancel their <laughs> subscription. I mean, it's the same kind of thing. They're not, they don't buy from a box for another 10 days, and then they turn around and they say, well, I wonder, you know. Yeah, I'm okay, not. but they're not canceling because of the product. 
They're canceling because Fossington owns the company. Yeah, I know. I know, and that, we heard the same thing with Gainers. They're all there. I, you know, I, 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 I don't think take much totally stock in those things. I think you're totally wrong to underestimate how this town feels. I'm not. Right. I'm. So. Ter listen, I Terry. I answer phone calls them. too. You know. <laughs> you know. I answer it. phone calls. I deal with the public the same as you. And you don't think they're upset? I didn't say that they weren't upset. I said I don't think that they're upset to the point that you believe. Okay. All you have to do is listen to the calls tonight. I'm listening. And I heard, I took an hour and a half of them last night on our station, CJCA, for heaven's sakes, from 10 after 10 till 11.30. I actually and the listened people. to your station today for that express purpose, and they're mad. <laughs> oh, no, you're listening to those kookaloos, those Bill and Bill guys. That's a different deal. You bring out the lunatic fringe with them, for okay. heaven's sakes. We're talking about people with intelligence here. I'll tell you what, we'll take a quick break again. We'll head back to phone lines. We'll get more on this. Coming right back. She's <laughs> expecting... So a lot of it might have had to do with, you know, where is he going to live? Where is his family going to live? And, you know, he's going to have kids, eh? So, you know. That's how the story broke. Yeah. And I don't believe for a second that Janet Jones Gretzky had very much to do with this story whatsoever. I really don't believe that. Okay, let's head to another caller. She did only to one point. <laughs> <laughs> only to one point. And that was... If I'm going to be traded, please trade yeah. me to where my wife sure. wants to live. Sure. Might but she, 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 I believe yeah. you, she didn't ask, yeah. but he said, trade me, please, to where my wife wants to live. <laughs> okay, another and caller. Good uh, evening. <laughs> makes life a lot easier, Terry. True. Right. Good evening. You're on the air. hockey. Hi. Um, I was just wondering if there would have been any way to get Luke Robitaille by dropping some of the money or uh, by maybe dropping one of the drafts or something, like if he was possibly available. Well, if, if you remember back to the uh, original rumors when this trade came out, his name was part of that trade. Mm -hmm. And it'd be kind of interesting to find out at what stage, because uh, the rest of the names are pretty close uh, in the whole deal. It, was his name dropped? Uh, did uh, Pocklington and Sather give up Robitaille for, for money? Uh, you know, that's a fair question. Yeah, because I think that uh, they could have got some more, like they should have dropped a couple of a million or something to get Robitaille. It's going to be interesting with, with Carson as well. Uh, nobody really has a handle on what kind of a career this kid is, is aimed at. For example, last year uh, in the Canada Cup, uh, Badger Bob Johnson was his coach, cut him from the team. Uh, and at the same time, uh, he, he has excellent stats for uh, his age. 55 goals and he was 19 last year? Right. Okay. I'll do another caller. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, good evening. How you doing? Hi, Brian. Hi. Hey, Terry. Hello. <laughs> um, one thing, no, a couple things, actually. If uh, Brian Hall runs for mayor, I'm moving to New Sarepta. You're going to what? He's going to what? I'm going to move to New Sarepta. Uh, war spite New Sarepta. Huh? <laughs> All right, I got gotcha. you. No. You think I don't know my geography, eh? <laughs> He'll probably run for premier then. So what I wanted to say, basically, is that uh, I certainly hope that uh, the other players who are in the city don't don't act in a foolish manner. I think that, um, if anything, they've got something to prove as a team now. I think that Mark Messier should maybe cool his heels a little bit and think about what's good for the team well, this to year. Be, to be totally honest, we don't know. No, I know. What I Mark Messier feels. <laughs> no, I just hope Kevin. that... <laughs> you got another one going here, folks. I mean, this Messier thing is starting to build now. <laughs> and Mark New hasn't rumor. done anything, <laughs> except somebody said he's going to have a press conference and he's called it off. Beyond that, we haven't heard one thing from Mark Messier, but already we've got this thing building and building. I know I played 36 years ago today. <laughs> oh, Go ahead. That is it. They are professionals. Uh -huh. They have a job to do. They're being, they're being paid to do a job. And I think they'll react like professionals. For their ability. Uh, yeah. It's, it's too good an organization. There's too much stability there. There's too much experience, too much professionalism. They'll, uh, they'll handle it well. They'll get through it fine. The bottom line is they don't have a choice. I mean, what are they going to do? Walk out and uh, give up their salaries for no, them? Of course I mean, not. Gets <laughs> no, of course not. Man, okay. But they'll handle it well. We'll head back to the phone lines once again and more of the trade talk right after this. He's much better off in a bedroom suburb of Los Angeles, frankly. But the question I have is concerning Mr. Pocklington's business decision, and I do agree it was a business decision, why didn't he present it that way from the get-go? It seems to me that he kind of tried to soft-soap it. And what do you gentlemen think about that? 
Well, I think he tried to present it as uh, Wayne's decision because uh, uh, Janet was in Los Angeles and Janet was pregnant, and that was certainly not the story. At the same time, as Brian said at the top of the show, if you go through some of the other things he said, uh, he did present it beyond that as a business decision. So Yeah, and actually he spoke first at the press conference, so he didn't make the announcement about them expecting a child. Wayne did that. True. Okay, another call. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello? Hello? That's okay. a pretty good point, though, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, about going, you know, raising your child down there in that yeah, area. Yeah, uh, I think Ted Byfield wrote a column on it the other day in, in, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the, our paper, and it, it, made, I, it, made, it makes sense. From, I think there was... From one point of view that yeah. hasn't had a lot of play mm -hmm. in this city, is this is a great thing for the National Hockey League. But, yeah. on, but on top of that is that, uh, is that Wayne made the statement the other day when he was interviewed by NBC. He said it'll be terrific to play hockey and not be, uh, you know, scrutinized by four to five hundred thousand people. Yep. At the same time, if yeah. this kid is a boy, <laughs> he's going. Wayne wants him to play <laughs> hockey. I don't think he wants to be bringing him up in Los Angeles for the rest of his life. Okay, let's go to another caller. Good evening. That's a long way yeah, off. Good evening. How are you doing tonight? I could get an opinion from both Brian and Terry on seeing Wayne wanted the trade to LA. When he comes back to Edmonton, will he have the support of some deep-hearted fans, or will he be booed from the minute he steps on the ice? He's been booed <laughs> everywhere he's played, uh, other than Edmonton, obviously. I think for the, uh, I think it'll be different here. I, I, there will come a point in the game where you're cheering for the home team, and that's your team, and uh, we may have one of those whining at the referee deals. Uh, it, something will come out sometime that'll uh -oh. that, that'll happen. But uh, I think generally over the course of time. I think Edmonton's always going to have that special place for Wayne Gretzky. Would they boo Peter Pocklington? <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Incidentally, <laughs> I have here, before we conclude tonight, for the first five callers, I have five pairs of tickets for the game on September the 19th when L.A. comes to town, because I guess there'll be lots of them around, right? I'll let them go for half price. Okay. I, uh, Long distance line. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Where are you calling from? October 19th. It's Saskatchewan. Whereabouts? Not okay, go ahead. What do you got tonight? Yeah, well, uh, I want the Oilers to win the Cup next year, and I want these guys to assure me that they're going to... They, they gave up three players who can play right now for mm -hmm. one guy who can play right now. And True. it's Martin Jonah. Is he better than Chris Joseph? Like, is he going to play? I honestly couldn't answer that question. I've never seen him play. This is apparently like scouting reports say he's pretty good, but again, he might be spending one more year in junior. So how are they going to replace uh, Krushelniski and McSorley? Well, first of all, neither one of them scores that much. And the thing is mm -hmm. that instead of winning, uh, instead of scoring six goals, the Oilers will score three and Grant will only allow two and they win again. <laughs> I don't really think either of those two <laughs> players you mentioned uh, had a long-term future with this hockey club. I, I think they were throw-ins. Okay. Let's head to another phone line. Good evening. You're on the air. Um, hi, I just have one comment to make. Okay. That is, as far as I'm concerned, Peter Poppington would sell his own mother for the right price. His what? His mother for the right price. What are those t-shirts that are around town? You heard of those? <laughs> uh, what is the it? The t-shirt? Uh, Beware Ava. And Wayne thought it was for life or something yeah. like that. It was a great t-shirt. Peter told Wayne it yeah, was forever. Yeah, isn't that something, <laughs> eh? Look at how much money he's making for somebody else again. Guy couldn't wait to get down there and say, could you print this on the back of these 10,000 T-shirts? I only bought them for a buck and a half. I'm going to sell them for 12, and then I'm going to go on vacation in Florida during the hockey season. That was 18,000 T-shirts, right? Yeah, 18,000. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you. Another uh, phone thanks. line. Good evening. All right, there. Hi, I'd like to make a few comments regarding okay. the trade. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I'd like to say that I think uh, Peter Parkington has changed over the years, but uh, one thing that still stays the same is he's gone from a sleazy used car salesman in $100 suits to mm. a sleazy hockey pay player salesman in $800 suits. Is that 800 or 1800 much. He's got no class. And I think, if anything, people in this city here should sell him like he sold our <laughs> hockey player. And I think that's a it's fairly a typical reaction out there right now. It is, yeah, it is from female fans. They love Wayne. <laughs> okay. I, you know, actually, I've never been a big hockey fan. I've never really watched hockey. But it's just the way the man does his business. You, you've never wa you, you you don't watch hockey. I watch the odd game, oh. but I've never. Do you been go to the games? It's every hockey game oh. in front of the TV. Have screen. Have you ever gone to the games? Yes, I have. Oh, okay. Are and you gonna I go? Are you gonna go again? Um, if the opportunity arises. Oh, sure. see now, there's your answer. See, Terry, they can say what they want. They'll be at the games. <laughs> okay. I, I predict right now attendance goes up this year. I'll take that bet. Will okay. you? 
Okay. Go ahead, new caller. Oh, I can see all the columns now. Great. Okay, <laughs> what do you got for us tonight? <laughs> really, I don't think that I, Wayne Gretzky owes us anything. I think we had 10 wonderful years of hockey. Um, we've got to go watch the greatest player in the world play. Mm -hmm. And I think he owes it to himself, irregardless of who initiated the trade, to, to look after his future. You I mean, are absolutely get, right. He could get hit by a car tomorrow crossing the street. And, and it's over. So, you know, if he if he can do it for his own his own good and to look after himself and his wife, great. I think we should be thankful that we had him. We had a chance to watch him here. You're absolutely right. Strike while the iron is hot. Okay. Appreciate the calls. Once again, we'll take a quick break and we'll return to the phone lines right after this. Through many of the same things they went through last year with Paul Coffey on a more personal and emotional level, but by the time they get to the playoffs, I think uh, they'll have to be the same kind of hockey club in terms of character and have a chance to win the cup. I've never known this team to go through a season without having periods of uh, great trepidation, changes, uh, and yet when it comes to playoffs, what you have to do is have your best people available, have the club hitting the streak okay. at that time. Just as they have when they've made the playoffs every year, you know, they haven't missed yet. They won't okay. miss now. It'll be five out of six. How's that? Okay. Stanley Cup this year. <laughs> I'll go on.